Live from San Jose, California, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Hey, welcome back everyone, live in Silicon Valley. It's theCUBE's coverage of Big Data SV, our event in Silicon Valley in conjunction with our Big Data NYC for New York City. Every year, twice a year we get uh, and our event going around Strata Hadoop in conjunction with those guys. I'm John Furrier with Silicon, Silicon Angle. With George Gilbert, our Wikibon announcer. Our next guest is Josh Rogers, the CEO of SyncSort. Been on many times, CUBE alumni, the firm that acquired Trillium, which we talked about yesterday. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Good to see you, how are you? So SyncSort is just you know, one of those companies that's really interesting, and we were talking about this, I want to get your thoughts on this, because sure. I'm not sure it was in the plan or not, or it's just gene, uh, brilliant genius moves by you guys on the management side, but legacy business, locked down yeah. legacy environments like the mainframe, yeah. and then transform into a modern data company. Yeah. Was yeah. that part of the plan, or kind of on purpose by accident, or what's, uh, I mean, what's part, the of, part of the plan? I mean, so you know, you think about what we've been doing for the last you know forty years. We had specific capabilities around managing data at scale and around um, helping customers, you know, process that data to get more value out of it through analytics. And we've just continually moved through the various kind of generations of technology to apply that same discipline, um, you know, in new environments and, and big data is frankly been a terrific opportunity for us to apply that same you know technical and, and talented uh, DNA uh, in that new environment so it's you know it's kind of been running the same game yeah. plan actually well, I mean, you guys have good years. execution but I think you know one of the things we were pointing out and this is some of those things where certainly I live in Palo Alto and Silicon Valley we love innovation we love yeah. all the, the shiny new toys but you get tempted to go after something really compelling cool right. and relevant and then go whoa I forgot about locking down some of the legacy data right. stuff right and then you're kind of working down you guys took a different approach you going into the trends from yeah. solid foundation right that's yeah. a different execution approach, and like you said, by, by design, so that's right. working. Yeah, it's definitely working, and I think it's also kind of focused on an element that maybe isn't as, as underreported, which is, you know, a lot of these legacy systems aren't going away, and so one of the big challenges. And the system you know, of record, by the way. Right, large in enterprises have is, and whatever how do I integrate those legacy, in, in a, you know, environments with these next generation in, environments, and to do that, you have to have expertise on both sides. And so, you know, one of the things I think we've done a good job is developing that big data expertise and then turning around and saying, we can solve that challenge uh, for you. And obviously the big iron to big data uh, solutions we bring to market are, are a perfect example of that. Um, but there's, you know, there's, uh, there's additional solutions that we can provide customers and we'll, we'll talk more about those in the future. Talk about sure. the Trillium acquisition. I want to yeah. just, you take a minute to describe that. You guys bought a company called Trillium. Yeah. What is it, I mean, just take a minute to just yeah. explain what it is and why is it relevant? Yeah, sure, so, so Trillium is a really special company. Um, they are the independent leader in data quality and have been for many years. They have, they've been in the, um, the top right of the Gartner Magic Quadrant for you know, more than a decade. Um, and really, when you look at you know large, complex, global enterprises, you know they're they're kind of the gold standard in data quality. And when I say data quality, what I mean is an ability to take a data set, understand the issues with data, that data set, and then establish business rules to improve the quality of that data, so you can actually trust that data. So obviously that's relevant in a near adjacency to the data you know movement and transformation that syncsort has been known for for so long. Um, it's it's. What's interesting about it is, as you think about the development and the maturity of you know, big data environments, specifically Hadoop, you know, people have a desire to obviously do analytics in that um, uh, data, and implicit in that is an ability to trust that data. And, and the way you get there is be al being able to apply profiling and quality rules in that environment, and that's an underserved market today. So you know when we saw um, <coughs> when we thought about the the Trillium acquisition, it was you know partly hey this is a great firm that has so much respect in the space and so much talented capability or powerful capability and and you know market leading data quality talent, but also we have an ability to to apply it in this next generation environment much like we did on the ETL and data movement space, um, and I think the the industry is at a point where there where people you know enterprises are realizing. I'm going to need to apply the same data management disciplines to make use of my data in my next generation analytics environment that I did in my data warehouse environment. Obviously, there's different technologies involved, there's different types of data involved, um, but those disciplines don't go away. And being able to you know, improve the quality and be able to kind of build integrity in your data sets is critical, and Trillium you know, is uh, has best in market capabilities in that uh, respect. So, Josh, you were telling us earlier about sort of the strategy of knocking down the pins right. one by one is, right. you know, it's become clear that we sort of took first the archive 
from the uh, data warehouse and then ETL offload and right. now progressively more of the right. you know business intelligence right. what are some of the besides data quality what are some of the other yeah. you know functions you have to so there's the whole notion of metadata management right yeah. and that's uh, that's incredibly important to support a number of um, uh, you know, key business initiatives that people are going to leverage um, there's different you know styles of movement of data so you know a, a thing that you'll hear a lot about is change data capture right so if I'm moving data sets from source systems into my, my um, my Hadoop environment, you know, I can move the whole set, but how do I move the incremental changes on a you know ongoing basis and a, uh, at the speed of business? Um, there's notions of ma master data management, right? So how do I make sure that I understand and have a gold kind of standard of, of, of reference data that I can use to drive my analytics capabilities? Um, <coughs> and then of course there's all the the analytics that people want to do, both in terms of visualization and predictive analytics. But you can think about all these is various engines that I need to apply the data to make to get maximum value. And it's not so much that, you know, these engines aren't important anymore, it's I can now apply them in a different environment that gives me a lot more flexibility, a lot more scale, better cost structure, um, and an ability to kind of harness, uh, you know, broader data sets. And so that's really our strategy is bring those engines to this new environment. There's two ways to do that. One is build it from scratch, which is kind of a, a long, you know, process to get it right when you think about complex global um, large enterprise requirements. The other is to take existing, you know, tested, proven, best in market engines and integrate it deeply in this environment. And that's the strategy we've taken. We think that offers a much faster time to value for customers um, to be able to maximize their investments in this next generation analytics infrastructure. So who has, who shares that vision and, and sort of wh where are we in the race? Look, I think we're fairly unique in our approach of, uh, of taking that approach. There, there's certainly other large platform players. Uh, they have you know, a broad set of capability and I think they're working on how do I kind of take that architecture and make it relevant in Hadoop and it ends up kind of creating a kind of co-generation approach. I don't think, I think that approach has limitations. Um, and I think if you think about taking the core engine and integrating it deeply within the um, the Hadoop ecosystem and the Hadoop capabilities, you get a faster time to market and a more manageable solution going forward. And also one that gives you, um, kind of future-proofs you from the underlying changes that we'll continue to see in the you know, Hadoop components or the big data components, I guess is a better, uh, better uh, articulation. Josh, what's the take on the show this year and the trends? Obviously, we've been talking about machine learning and yeah. AI, seeing that. Sure. And as you guys look at your execution plan, yeah. What's the landscape happening out there in the, right. in, the, in the show this year? I mean, they started to see more business outcome conversations, but with machine learning and AI, it's really putting pressure on uh, the companies, and certainly IoT and the cloud growth right. uh, as a forcing function. Yeah, so what do, you, do you see the same thing? What's your thoughts? Yeah, so, so machine learning's a really powerful capability, and I think as it relates to the data integration kind of space, there's a lot of benefit to be had. You know, think about quality. You know, if I have to establish a set of business rules to, uh, to improve the quality of my data, wouldn't it be great if those little rules could learn as they actually you know, process data sets and see how they change over time? So there's really interesting opportunities there. Um, we're seeing a lot of adoption of cloud. Um, you know, more and more customers are looking at how do I you know, uh, live in a world where I've got a piece of my operations on premise, I've got a piece of my op operations in, in cloud, manage those um, together and, and gradually probably shift more into cloud over time. So we're doing a lot of work um, in that space. The, um, you know, there's some basic fundamental recognitions that, that have happened, which is, you know, if I stand up a Hadoop cluster, I am going to have to buy a series of tools to make, you know, get value out of the data in mm -hmm. that cluster. Um, that's a good step forward, um, uh, in my perspective, because this notion of I'm going to stand up a team offshore and they're just going to yeah. build all these things. Cost of ownership goes to the roof. Yeah, so, so I, I think, you know, they're, the, the industry's moved past this concept of, you know, I make an investment in Hadoop, but I don't need a, additional. Um, solutions. Well, so it, it highlights it highlights something that we were talking about um, at Google Next last week about enterprise ready, and I want to get your thoughts because you guys have a lot of experience. It's something that's right. again in your wheelhouse. How you guys have attacked the market's been pretty impressive, and 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 you know not obvious. And look, on paper looks pretty boring, but you're you're doing great. I mean, you've done the right strategy. It works. Yeah. That's uh, the yeah. you know ultimate. mainframe <laughs> locking in the mainframe right. system of record. And we've talked about this in the cube. So there's a lot of videos going back yeah. three years. But enterprise ready is a term now that's forcing people, even the best right. like Google, right. to be like looking in the mirror and saying, wait a minute, we have a blind spot. 
right. best tech doesn't always win. Right. You got table stakes, right. you got SLAs, you got, right. you mentioned data quality, one right. piece of bad data that should be clean right. can really kind of screw up something. Yeah. So what's your well, thoughts on uh, enterprise ready right now? Yeah, so I, th I, think the, I think that people are recognizing that you know, to get a payoff on a lot of these investments in next generation analytic infrastructure, they're going to need to be able to run mission critical workloads there and, po and take, you know, take on mission critical kind of business. Um, initiatives and, and, and prove out the value. And to do that, you, you have to be able to manage the environment, you know, achieve the uptimes, have the reliability and resiliency that, um, you know, quite frankly, we've been delivering for 40 years. And so I think that's, that's, a, that's another kind of point in uh, our value proposition that frankly seems to be somewhat unique, which is, hey, we've been doing this for thousands of customers, you know, um, the most sophisticated. What are the ones that are going to be fatal customers. flaws for people that they don't pay attention to? Well, security is, is, is huge. Um, I think the, um, you know, manageability, right? So, look, if, if I have to upgrade 25 components in my Hadoop cluster to get to the next version, and I need to upgrade all the tools, like, I've got to have a way to do that, that, that allows me to, you know, not only get to the next you know, level of capability that the vendors are providing, but also to do that in a way that doesn't bring, maybe bring down all these mission critical workloads that have to be 24 by 7. So those pieces are really important and having, you know, both the experience and understanding what that means and also m being able to invest the engineering resources to deliver. And don't forget the sales force, you got to have the DNA and the, and the people yeah, on the streets. Sure. Absolutely. Josh, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Great insight, you guys have, a, you know, just, just to give you a compliment, great strategy, mm -hmm. and again, Good, good execution on your side, and, and as you guys are in new territory, every time we talk to you, you're interested in something new every time, so yeah. great to see you. Sync Sword here inside theCUBE, uh, always back and sharing commentary, almost going on the marketplace, AI, machine learning, but the table stakes and the enterprise security and whatnot, still critical for execution, and, and again, IoT is really forcing the function of people to get, get a focus on the data. Thanks so much. I'm John Furrier, George Gilbert, we'll be back with more live coverage after this break. <laughs>